Okay, we're sitting here on Dosaurus Lane, right across the street from the Glen Cove Elementary School. What we're going to do right now is basically going to reenact uh, Roy Campanella's uh, traffic accident in 1958 that left him paralyzed uh, and ended his baseball career with the Brooklyn Dodgers. He, had, he suffered his accident on precisely January 28th, 1958. It was a Monday night slash Tuesday morning. It was driving in blizzardy conditions that night and it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning, where he lost control on this street and on an S-curve and where he crashed right into a telephone pole. And what he was doing, apparently was doing was on his way home from a liquor store, which he ran in the off season. Uh, and on the way home, and he lived on this street on Dosaurus Lane, where he apparently has suffered his accident. Uh, now, 1958 was a very tumultuous off season for the Brooklyn Dodgers. This was the uh, off season in which they had announced that they were moving from Brooklyn to Los Angeles. So they had already played their last game in Brooklyn. They, the players and the team were making the transition, uh, the move to Los Angeles. And for whatever Roy Campanella was doing, he was closing up his liquor store, getting in, getting ready for the transfer as well, uh, getting ready for the move to Los Angeles and all. Um, he, uh, anyway, he was closing his, he says he was closing his liquor store at about two o'clock in the morning. And he was driving home via the Northern State Parkway up to this, up to his home in Glen Cove on this street, Dosaurus Lane, D-O-S-O-R-I-S -S Lane. And when he ran into a telephone wall. Now, there are conflicting reports because you know, because it's considered rather late to owner to be opening up a liquor store or running a liquor store, you know, two o'clock in the morning on a uh, Monday night. But apparently, that's what he says he was doing. There were also also reports that he was having an affair with another woman so I mean not that it really matters what he was doing I mean it was it would have been a pretty scandalous thing back in the day even scandalous thing now when you think of it but anyway it doesn't really matter what he was doing it's gonna replicate his accident right now we're going northbound on Dosaurus Lane now what we're doing is going to approaching what you see is a a curve sign up ahead a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign and you can see it right there uh, basically it's warning that a curve is approaching and uh, to reduce your speed to 25 miles an hour and and then you see another arrow up the road here and basically it's another arrow warning you to uh, veer to the right because it's a it's a curve this is a, we are pushing the S curve right now I'm gonna put on the brights so apparently what happened was as you're supposed to be making the right hand uh, veering right he apparently slipped or he did, fell asleep at the wheel or whatever he did and he kept going straight and he wound up running right into this telephone pole and at a, a high rate of speed, he slammed in that telephone pole. He broke his neck and he wound up being paralyzed for it. Now, I want to go out now. What happened is, I'm going to go out here and show you that the actual report shows that he hit telephone pole number 25. And I'm going to show you that the number 25 is still there. So, this is definitely the pole that he hit. They haven't moved it, the pole hasn't moved. So the, all the, everything in the road is still here. The accident, the S-curve, the streets, and everything is still here from the night of the accident over 55 years ago. Um, as you can see, I tried to replicate this as much as I could. Uh, you can see all the snow on the ground. I'm actually, it's actually about three o'clock in the morning right now. And his accident was about 3.30 in the morning, so that works out. And it's actually, I'm taping this in early February. The accident happened in late January, so I'm not too far off there. Although the conditions are pretty clear right now, it's not, there's no real slippery snow on the ground, although you do see a blizzard from a few days before. And this is the cross street, apple tree lane. I'm going to get up there so you can get a good look at it. And it's basically apple tree. You won't be able to see it. It's very hard to see it, but apple tree lane in Del Soros. This is pretty much the intersection where the accident happened. And this is uh, Allison. Apparently, one of the doctors, I guess the doctor who lived, there was a doctor who lived at this house that overheard the accident and he came to his aid. But there was nothing really can really do. He saved his life, but couldn't get him out of the wheelchair for, uh, for the rest of his life. So, this is the pole. This is telephone pole, New York telephone pole number 25, as I, as I called it back then. And this is the car, this is the telephone pole that. Roy Campanella collided with and caused his permanent injuries and ended his baseball career and 
He basically, he, he died in 1993 after being a paraplegic for about, oh, roughly 35 years. So this is it. I could have done this in the daytime to make things clearer, but I chose to do it now to replicate the circums, the, uh, the conditions as, they, as Roy Campanella had them that night, or as close as I can possibly get. Anyway, so this is it. The New York telephone pole number 25 on Dosaurus Lane, just shy of Apple Tree Lane in Glen Cove, Long Island.